Hey, what's up everybody? My name's Tim with Fiorucci Fabrications, here with Lowbrow Customs with another tech tip video, and I'm gonna show you how to pressure test a gas tank. So for this video, we're gonna be using this vintage Triumph gas tank, but this method really applies to any gas tank that you're gonna put on your bike, whether it's new or used. If you buy a gas tank from Lowbrow, even though it's a new gas tank, we're gonna suggest that you pressure test it before you get it painted. Just to cover your butt, you don't wanna get uh, this nice fancy paint job on your brand new gas tank and then it leaks and ruins the thing. And you're kinda, even if you buy one used from a swap meet, you're gonna wanna pressure test it for the same reasons, just to make sure that when it came off the bike that it was still sealed up and won't ruin your paint job when you then get it painted. So I'm gonna show you all the steps how to do this. The first thing that you're gonna to wanna to do, if it's a used tank like the one we have, is to purge it and get all the gas out of it to make it safe to work on. So let's go outside and I'm gonna show you how to use your car to purge a gas tank. So this is very easy to do with your car. All you need is your funnel, your gas tank, and then I brought out a furniture pad in case your gas tank is painted nice so you don't ruin it. So all you gotta do, you stick the funnel in the filler and this just helps direct the exhaust into your gas tank. And you're gonna actually lay it down on the ground and put the funnel over your exhaust pipe and then in a way that it's gonna stay. And then you wanna make sure to open your pet cock just so the gas can flow all the way through. The exhaust will just push all the fumes out of your gas tank. And then you just gotta start up your car and let it run for about 20 to 30 minutes. Okay. And now we just kinda wait. Yeah, now let's just get drunk and smoke some cigarettes. So you can set a timer on your phone just to make sure that you uh, let it sit for enough time. All right, we're done. Don't worry that I'm in exactly the same spot. So you just shut off your car and uh, take it all down and we're gonna go back into the garage. There's one more step I'd like to show you on uh, making sure all the fumes are out and so you don't blow yourself up. So let's go do that. Come on, bud. So we're back in the garage and I'm gonna show you the other tip I was talking to you about outside. And uh, for that, we're gonna need your safety glasses and I'm gonna use a torch to make sure that we purged all the gas out. There could be a little flame that shoots out, so um, it's good practice to maybe put some kind of face shield on. We're just gonna make sure that we purged all the gas out and so you just light your torch and you're gonna stick it down inside the gas tank. All right, so nothing like uh, no flame shot out of the cap, so we're good to start working on this thing. So to do this, I grab my cylinder leak down tester and these are available pretty much at any auto parts store. I like to use these on pressure testing gas tanks because you can regulate how much air that you put into the gas tank so you don't turn it inside out and it'll also give you a reading on how much air the gas tank is holding. And once it gets to a certain amount of pressure, it doesn't just keep forcing more air into it when your gas tank is holding a certain amount of pressure. So it's uh, just a safety tool so you don't ruin your gas tank that you're trying to test before you paint it. You're gonna need a scrap piece of hose and then a couple fittings to make an adapter kit to fit to the airline fitting on your cylinder leak down tester. So let's get started uh, on your gas tank. Uh, leaving your pet cocks on uh, is important because one actually plugs the hole and you can turn this off uh, so it's not leaking out of there. And the other one is a great place to hook your hose up, uh, to hook it up to the leak duct. So we're gonna pump air in through your pet cock. So you're gonna snug up the hose. So now we're gonna hook this up to the leak down tester and then, there we go. Got the uh, regulator hooked up to my gas tank and I'm gonna put air into it. I'm gonna show you how I like to set the pressure on these. Don't really go off of the dial. Um, you, want, you definitely wanna put under 10 pounds of pressure in this thing, but uh, I don't always expect these dials to be accurate. So when I set these up, I like to just use my hand to check the pressure. So we're gonna turn up the dial on the regulator and I'm gonna set this a little high just to show you uh, what I'm talking about. So you're gonna put your hand over it if you're struggling to keep your hand over the cap without it leaking around the edges, your pressure is way too high. And if you had this actually sealed up, you're going to turn this tank inside out. 
So I'm going to I'm going to turn this pressure down quite a bit. Cuz there only really needs to be a little bit of pressure in this thing to keep the to get it to leak out of the pinholes for you to find the leaks. So we're going to turn this way down. And it's still kind of a struggle. A little air goes a long way with these. Okay, that seems pretty good. And I'm going to just put the cap back on because it's vented, so it's going to still release a little bit of air. But it has enough pressure where we're going to still be able to find the leaks. So we got some air in the tank and uh, we had some air coming out, you can hear it. I'm going to use some soapy water just to uh, spray all over this thing as if I was going to pressure test a car tire to find a leak. I'm going to show you spray around the gas cap and see how it's got bubbles. This is all you really need uh, for it to do. If it's leaking out of your gas cap, it's going to be leaking out of the anywhere else that you might have a hole in your tank. We're going to spray this thing all over and try to find uh, any leaks that might come out. You're going to have, you could have some that leak out of the fittings and other areas like that, and that should be okay because you could, they might just need to be tightened up. What we're really looking for is uh, leaks at any kind of weld seams. It's not typically going to leak in the middle of the gas tank. Where it's going to leak is anywhere where two seams come together or where fittings were welded on, places like that. So that's where we're looking. And if you get bubbles around your fittings, just kind of wipe them off to make sure that they're coming from the threads and not the weld that's close by where the fitting attaches to the body of the tank. So we got some around this, uh, but those are just coming from the threads. This just needs to be tightened up and sealed properly. It's not from the weld in the tank. So we're going to keep looking, and it looks like I found one up front. Yeah, here we go. Look at that. See how it's bubbling up? And so that's going to be on the seam right here. I'm going to have to clean that off and re-weld it. Not all of your uh, cracks are going to look like that. Some might just seep a little bit. And so we're going to cover this whole thing, uh, just smear it around so it gets really nice and soapy to create like a, like a barrier uh, where it's going to bubble up because some of them might just bubble ever so slightly and you're really going to have to inspect it because even bubbles like that, uh, or I'm, what I should say, little leaks like that, will cause your paint job to bubble up and be ruined. So uh, you really want to find those. So this is worth taking time. So we're going to look it all over. And like I said before, uh, any spot where there's uh, a weld seam, this whole tunnel edge you're going to want to inspect, just anywhere that this thing's been welded on. Because even butt joints like this, they could leak on the edge of the weld, like in the heat affected zone of the weld. And it, it doesn't have to be where two pieces came together at a seam to leak there. It could just be where you welded something right on top of the body of the gas tank. But, uh, so we're just gonna continue soaking this thing down and just smear it all over the place, get this thing nice and soapy. And it's looking like that hole in the front is gonna be the only spot where we're gonna need to repair. Everywhere else is looking pretty good. Like I said before, we had some bubbles, had some fittings. Uh, as you can see, but um, that's just from the threads. That's not actually from the weld. And I think this thing looks pretty good. So we're going to clean this tank off and clean the paint off. I'm going to dry it all off and prep it for welding. I'm going to weld it up and then uh, we'll have to pressure test it again. So I'll show you how to weld this thing. Okay, so we remembered where the crack was, so we're going to have to just clean all the paint off of it and get it ready to weld. It's a good measure to uh, clean off even more than uh, where it was leaking from because sometimes when you're welding this up, the crack wants to run on you. And so you, sometimes you're gonna have to chase it. So it's good to just clean up a bigger area than what you expect it to be.
So I'm using just an air grinder with a wire brush on it because I don't actually want to remove any of the metal from the tank. Some of these, especially on British tanks, this can be very thin. So the last thing I want to do is make it any thinner. Uh, I would suggest using uh, just an air grinder with a wire brush on it, or they sell little Scotch-Brite pads, and those can be nice too, just to clean off the paint and uh, get this thing shined up and ready to weld. Uh, so we're all cleaned up. Now I just need to hook my ground up and get to welding. So when you're doing this, uh, I wouldn't just ground to the table because uh, this being a round surface and it's going to wobble around or it'd have to have nice contact with the table for it to actually ground itself so you can weld because you can get arcs and uh, it can actually blow through the sheet metal. So you really want to ground directly to your part. And so on a gas tank, a good spot is just right inside the filler neck because there's definitely not any paint on the inside of the tank. If it is coated, you might have to actually uh, figure something else out uh, to um, get a good ground. Here, I'll show you something else. So if you, uh, you don't actually have a good surface uh, like uh, to clamp onto, but say there's no paint on your tank, uh, another good spot would, uh, there's like a magnet where you can stick it to the side of the tank, but then actually lower the post down to it so you're actually touching the tank and you can ground to this. This is something that I used to use on, uh, say like rubber mounted oil tanks and stuff like that while they were on the bike because there was nowhere to really clamp onto and it's rubber mounted. So this could be a good trick, uh, something for you to pick up because you can actually lower these down with oil uh, Allen keys, touch the side of your tank and then ground to these. Granted, they only work if your tank is not painted yet. One other thing I would really like to say is uh, people always think the best way to fix these tanks is to braze them. If somebody is going to say that they're going to repair your tank by brazing it, just run away, go somewhere else, don't deal with that person, unless uh, maybe I guess they're really good at it, but in my experience, they're usually terrible. So <laughs> the only way I like to fix uh, thin sheet metal parts is with my TIG welder. I don't use MIG for anything. I never braze on sheet metal when I'm trying to seal it up. Uh, so uh, please, people, just stop doing that because I'm sick of fixing those things. <laughs> So remember where the seam is, it's, I can't really see the crack right now, but as soon as I start to weld, uh, the crack will start to open up and uh, I'll be able to find it and see, and basically follow the crack all the way until it stops. So we're gonna weld this thing up and there we go. There it is. And now you just kind of follow the crack all the way until it stops. And since you're adding heat into it, uh, it won't be that weird for it to start to spread on you a little bit. There we go, we bubbled the paint just a hair. That actually looks pretty good, I don't see any we didn't get any porosity from, because I was welding straight over the, uh, the British weld from the 70s, so sometimes that thing can get a little hairy. And I see a little spot I just want to address. It seals a lot better if you use filler, whether or not you think you need it or not. It's gonna, uh, the filler actually will clean the weld puddle and uh, will keep it from getting holes. So it's, it's good to use filler in spots like this. And I'm using the 70S-2. Uh, I think that it welds dirty material better than the six. And I got one little spot I wanna. So now that this is welded, uh, I gotta unhook this and we're gonna pressure test this again just to make sure that I sealed it up properly. Sometimes that right at the edge of the weld, you'll get another little pinhole that I'll just have to drop another uh, little tack on to seal it up. So this could be a little bit of back and forth, but we're gonna pressure test it again and see where we're at. Okay, now we're just gonna hook up all our stuff again. I never actually unhooked the hose from the petcock. So uh, oh, we just need to hook the airline up to the leak down tester. There we go. 
So you're just gonna wanna smear all the soap all over where I just welded at. And you're gonna have bubbles like that, but they're coming from the tank, so they're not, or the gas cap, so they're not important. So just smear it on uh, the weld seam and make sure that we don't even have any tiny little seepers, because it'll look like this, these tiny little bubbles, but they'll accumulate. They'll become uh, bigger and just continue to travel and grow. But if they're just staying still like this, then you don't have a problem. So it looks good, and I think that's a wrap. Okay, so now all you gotta do is clean off your gas tank and it's ready for paint. Uh, I guess that's a wrap, so uh, thanks for joining me in this tech tip video, and now you have no excuse not to pressure test your next brand new gas tank from lowbrockcustoms.com. And uh, see you next time.